If you've made it this far, I'm impressed. You're one of the few who are invested in making your life easier by doing a bit of hard work now. As I said at the beginning, this isn't sexy, but it is incredibly useful. In this episode, I script the calipers version of the symbol that is used in section and elevation, and I show you how to automatically detect the view you're in using the global context command. Then I get into scripting the independent version of the label as opposed to the attached version of the label, because having a label that only works when it's attached to a single element type isn't entirely useful. Through this video, you will see how important clear logic is. There's a few if then statements that I have to work through. Next thing we want to do is determine the global context. So we've got an entry here called global context, glob context, with all the different indexes as to where this part is appearing. So I'll put in some constants, or just one for now. That's four, because we want to know if we're in a section or elevation. So what I'll do is I'll break this up a bit more. Draw label plan. So that shouldn't be any different now. Just moved it around. Yeah. I go if global context is not equal to a hashtag means not. It's an operator. Operator relational not equal to or hashtag not equal to. So if the global context is not section, go sub. A label plan. Now, when you are using an if statement in conjunction with executing a go sub, you don't have to put in the then. In this one, we will go right. So, set up my variables so that in section. So I've created a library part previously, which is a object, not a label. And you can adjust it, but it's not automatic. So this is what I'm going for, this sort of appearance. So if I place that, how do I want it to place? Where do I want it to anchor from? I'd say I'd want it to anchor it at that point, and then draw either left or right based on that. I haven't saved this yet. Just attach it to this. That'll be line two, starting at zero, zero, going to multiple length and zero. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Interesting. Why is it up there? Why is it up there? Is it because my correction? Ah, oh, here it is. Account for leader. Right. So, so I don't have to do that twice. I will put that under here. All right, and that's a tiny, tiny. I need to multiply it by global scale. Silly me. Right, very good. Now we rotate, we draw another one. All right, I want that pointing down, so we will rotate the negative angle. There it is. We've got our four hot spots there. I don't want that either. I want to be a little bit smarter about it. All right, let's draw our arc. 
x, y, radius. So my alpha starting point will be zero with the extension. The extension is a length. So in order to find that, I go extension angle, caliper extension, divided by radius, multiplied by 180, divided by i. Now alpha will be extension a. Beta will be, I think that's right. Let's have a look. No, went the wrong way, and that's a huge extension. Huge. That should actually be 0.05. There we go. That's better. Just had it too big. And I'm going the wrong way. It needs to draw anti-clockwise, so I need to start there and finish there. That's better. So let's mirror that. Turn. Ooh. Okay. Here we go, I need that. Where do I calculate that? Under here. So I'll just shift that up under here. And here we will go multi. That's better. So if I change this to 15, that has changed. Change this to 20, that has changed. Good, that's what I'm after. Now to do the text. Okay, so this is not really draw text. This is a draw text background. That would make more sense. So let's call it that, draw text background. That way we can just concentrate on drawing our text in here. And that will appear at our zero, zero point. 10 degree fall. Let's just create a couple. Roof, ramp. You notice it changes to an arrow. That's because that's its... I don't know why. <laughs> it's just Archicad has decided that that's its default setting. So if we look at global context, we've got here editing feedback mode from the floor plan and editing feedback mode from a 3D view or editing feedback mode from a sectional elevation. So let's just put some of those contexts in, see if that does anything. One of my 2D scripts, global context or, or global context equals, or global context. I think that logic is right. So if I'm in a section or if I'm editing in a section, it will go to this. Let's try that. <laughs> so my... If is not section, or if it's that should actually be, and global context is not. Right, there we go. That's behaving as it should. Let's see this. That's behaving as it should. Okay, the next thing is I don't want the text to be generating at this point, I want it to be generating halfway along that line. So that will be caliper length divided by two. Oh, wrong way. Okay, and normally I would just have the text turned off 10 degrees. Okay, that's that one. Let's go back to plan and work through the logic if it is a detached label. So if it's independent, I want to be able to manually put this in. So to do that, I'll need a couple of parameters. That will be just a real number. What do we test for? So we're just testing to see whether it's attached to a roof or not. So I'm testing 
global element type is global element roof, then you want to hide parameters. So they should be shown on this one. All four one is two, and they should be hidden on this one. Good. That will hide these two parameters if it's not attached to a roof. Next thing we've got to test for is we want to show a four angle if this full type is selected as roof. Otherwise, we'll show a gradient. Now, some of you might be wondering, why didn't I just go else? If full type equals F type roof, then hide parameter this, else, hide parameter. And the reason for that is script flexibility. The script may be changed later down the track, and this allows expansion of these hide parameter statements nice and easily. There we go, full type roof, full. Might actually shift these up. Mm, there we go. The other thing I want to do is I want that and that to be the same. So if I switch between the two, it'll have the same number. And how do I do that? These calculations here. So I go if mod pun name equals ball angle. So if the angle gets changed, I want the full gradient to equal And if the mod bar name is gradient, then I want the full angle equals a tan. So that's a trigonometry function, a tan, one divided by multiplied by 180 divided by pi. Okay, and at the end, I'll do them in the same order in which I've declared them in my parameters. Full angle equals full angle, full gradient equals full gradient. Separated by a comma, and you might say, well, why didn't I just do parameters? Full angle equals that. Because the parameters command doesn't deal too well with calculations. It deals okay with just a direct exchange, but not with calculations. So here, parameters text on equals one, that's nice and simple. Here, I've got a calculation going on, and from experience, it just doesn't deal with it very well. So you do your calculation, and then you go parameter equals parameter. That's how it works. Righto, so... If I've got a gradient of 1 to 20, that should be a degrees of 2.86 or something like that. Wrong. All right, let's see if my other one's working. Got a full angle of 4 degrees. That should be 1 in 14. There you go. So this is wrong. If I get rid of this last bit, what happens then? 1 in 20 is 2.8. There we go. All right. So this 180 multiplied by pi is translating degrees to radians. Turns out I don't need it in GDL to, to translate a gradient to an angle. I do need it to translate an angle to a gradient. So that's right. A gradient of 1 to 6 should be an angle of 9.4. There we go. An angle of 6 degrees should be about 1 to 10. Good. So now I need to get that into my 2D label. So I could just do this, roof beach equals full angle, and roof gradient equals full gradient. So it'll come down here, it'll fill these two variables with my parameters, and then if it's attached to a roof, it'll swap out those two variables for what they're meant to be. Excellent. So now I have an independent label. that I can just use as a dumb label. I can also use it as an attached label.
and it automatically updates depending on its value. Good. Another thing is I need to be able to determine whether this is an arrow or calipers because I may want to use this in a detail and so far it only shows calipers if I'm in a section window or elevation. I may want to use it as an independent label in other uses, other scenarios. So I'll need to work around that. So let's create a parameter. We know what to do here, so I'll just zip through it. There we go, arrow or calipers. So if the global context is not section and the global context, so my logic is starting to get a little bit convoluted now, all the different conditions that need to be met sort of start to clash with one another. So I need to rethink this a bit. So the label's either attached or it's independent. Is that what I want? No, I want to test for global element type. So if the global element type is a roof, then I can test for its context, all right? Because it's automatic. So if, then it's automatic. I can drop into those. Otherwise, so if I'm dropping into this part of the if statement, it's because it's not attached to a roof. So I want to manually determine what symbol I'm using. You know what, that's better. I'm gonna change this to symbol. Hmm, didn't quite work in that regard. Tried one of those new bang dangled commands. Yeah, confusing results. What I was trying to do is select every instance, change them all at once. It kind of worked and kind of didn't. And change the parameter script. Okay, and if symbol type. All right, let's see if that works. So far, nothing broke. Well, that's good. It's full type roof, ramp, slab. But I want to do calipers. Why is that coming back here? That's not right. Why is that coming back there? That's not right. Well, something funky's going on there, isn't it? Got to figure that out. That's working though. That isn't. Okay. Right. That's because that's because I updated the position of my text, but I didn't update the position of my background fill. But that's going the wrong way. Why is that going the wrong way? Now it's going the right way. Oh my goodness. It's so annoying sometimes. Okay, the axis isn't changing, so what's going on here? Arrow mull. I'll bring this down to here. Interesting. All right. Good. Oh, there's my mull. This is why your scripts have to be organized, because they get confusing even when you're the one who's written them. So my text background. Right. So I need to add another condition in here, because I bet you if I turn on these, they're not working. They're not working. Right, so this is a logic issue, not a script issue. I've tried to separate out, draw background with the others, and it's not working. So what I'll do is I'll call them from within my subroutines themselves. So I'll get my content there, and right when I draw my text, and before I delete, that way I don't have to add 
any transformations. That's okay. Where's my text down here? That makes more sense anyway. It's grouped together with the text. So it'll we'll come down to here, hit that, drop down to here, return back up to here, and then hit that and return back up to the top. Alrighty. Does that work? No, it doesn't. Amazing. That's all right. That's because I just haven't added those. Do these work? Doesn't work at all. That's not very helpful. Why not? That's a roof. That's a slab. So why aren't these working? It's a roof. If I was to change that to a ramp, it's working. Okay, what's going on? Did I not put it in here properly? Ah, here we go. Right, there's another one up here. Text. That's better. That's better. All right, so the arrows are working. The calipers are not because I haven't offset them. Okay, so if I come down here to my calipers, draw label section, instead of putting my anchor point of my text there, let's add in a transformation instead. So add to in the X and the Y. That way it will impact both these statements. And then I'll delete at the end. There we go. That looks better. Okay, I think I'm nearly there. If I turn on my outline, it works. But if I now turn off my opaque fill, my outline turns off as well. This is actually an easy fix. So I've got here, if opaque fill, then it drops into here. There's a simpler way to do this. ACB label opaque fill is an on-off. ACB label frame is an on-off. So I've dealt with the label frame in here. I can deal with the opaque fill in these codes here. So let's have a look at poly two. 2D shapes, drawing elements, poly two. What am I using? Poly two B. Frame fill. What's frame fill? Frame fill is draw contour, draw fill, close and open polygon. So I can come down here, I want to draw the contour because the visibility of that contour is controlled with my status code. So what I want to control is J2, which is my two. So instead of doing two, I can go one plus two multiplied by, and this is the power of using binary stuff the status codes and frame fill codes. Just got an on off and I've multiplied my two by my on off. So it'll be one plus two if it's on or one plus zero if it's off. So now I can get rid of this. That should work, fingers crossed. Right, so my frame is on, but my fill is off. My frame is off, my fill is on, frame and fill is on all controlled by a simple on off switch if you like through here i've realized i haven't got hot lines on these and i actually would like this to be a bit longer i think it's one is to 100 what if i went to one to 50. yeah i think i might make it a bit longer not much and Hotlines. Good. So I'll just create a preview picture for this label. I should actually have them facing the correct way, right? Ooh, look at that. That didn't work. Why is? is it working? Yeah, that part's working still. It's just being put in the wrong place. So I've got my mole here. That delete should be down there. No. Maybe that should be the other way around. It'll be positive. There's that. And if it's the other way, that's better. Right. That's working. I just had that in the wrong spot. That delete and that going backwards. Okay. 
Now let's create a preview picture. Oh, it looks all right. That's interesting. Why is that showing? It's attached. It's attached. I don't want that showing. Why is that showing? Same with that. What about here? The arrow is showing. Arrow is showing. Right. So I'm not hiding it properly here. Hide. Did I get the names right? Full angle. Ah, symbol type. So I need to hide my symbol type as well. I think that's it. Yep, yeah, good. Hidden. Should not be hidden. Should not be hidden. Good. That's how I want it. So I think that's it. I think I'm done. Of course, if I find anything else, I can fix it on the fly. So I just define my default parameters make sure they're all set the way i want them to be okay well that was a journey right if you've made it this far well done i'm impressed i'm not entirely sure i'll do this format again that is working it out as i go because it's quite disjointed in nature and harder to follow but i could be wrong you may prefer this format so let me know in the comments if you like this episode give it a like if you like this content, click the subscribe button. Go script some objects. I'll see you later.